Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, we're going to look at the lab example for static routing. So I've got my three routers, R1, R2, and R3. You can see the IP addresses that are configured on there in the diagram on the screen. I'm not going to read you all the IP addresses. It would take ages. And I've got my three PCs as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to configure static routes between the different routers and then test connectivity between the PCs. So let's have a look at the lab. I've already configured the IP addresses on everything. So PC1 has got IP address 10.0.1.10. PC2 is already configured 10.0.2.10 and PC3 is 10.1.1.10. If we look at R1, I've already added the IP addresses, which has added my connected and local routes to the routing table. And also the IP addresses are already pre-configured on R2 and also on R3. Okay, let us go back and look at the lab topology again. I'll have to go back a few times as we're doing this to check and see what we need to add routes to. Okay, so let's do R1 first. R1 is connected to all of the routes around R1. It's going to need a route to 10.1.0.0, which is behind R2 and to 10.1.1.0, which is behind R3. Okay, so the first route we need to add is 10.1.0.0, and that's going to be reachable on 10.0.0.2. Okay, so let's go back and add that. That was on R1. You know what I'm going to do is I'll minimize this window just to make it a bit easier to see what we're doing. Okay, so that should be a bit easier. So the command to add a static route is IP route. I need to be at global config first, and the command is going to be IP route to 10.1.0.0, which is behind R2. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.0, and the next hop address is the fast ethernet 0 slash 0 interface on R2, which is at 10.0.0.2. Okay, so that's my first route added. And then I need to add a route also to 10.1.1.0. Again, I'm always using a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 just to make it easier to see what we're doing. And again, it's reachable through R2. I don't point it directly at R3. And the IP address on the directly connected interface on the R2 side is again 10.0.0.2. Okay, so I have now configured routes from R1 going to those networks behind R2 and R3. But if I go back down to the enable prompt now, if I ping 10.1.0.1, even though my router has got a route to get there, this is going to time out. The reason is that a ping checks that the traffic can get there and get back again as well. So the traffic on R1, in fact, let me show you how to double check this. So let's go on to R3. Okay, so I'm on R3 here, which is going to be receiving the pings. And I'm going to debug IP ICMP because ping uses ICMP, the Internet Control Message Protocol. Again, we'll be talking about how ping works more in a later section. This is going to show me the pings coming in. So if I go back on to R1 and try pinging again, and then jump onto R3, 
I can see those ping requests are coming in. So the traffic is getting from R1 to R3 just fine. The problem is it can't get back again because if I do a show IP route on R3 and make this bigger again, it would need a route back to the 10.0.0.0 network. And right now, it doesn't have that in its routing table. So that's why the ping is failing it right now. I need to configure reachability to everywhere in both directions for everything to work. Okay, so let's go back and just double check that I configured everything on R1. So I'll do a show IP route on here and it needed static routes to get to the 10.1.1 network and the 10.1.0 network. Those have both been added going via 10.0.0.2 on R2. So R1 is all good right now. Next up, we'll move along to R2, go to global configuration. R2 needs a route to the network behind R1. So that's IP route going to 10.1.1.0 and subnet mask 255.255.255.0. And the next hop address is on R1. It's at 10.1.0.1, the directly reachable interface. I also need to configure routes to the routes behind R1. So let me just slide my window over here. And the routes behind R1 is IP route going to 10.0.1.0, 255.255.255.0, and a next hop address of 10.0.0.1 on R1. Then I also need to get to 10.0.2 network. I'll just hit my up arrow here to bring the previous command back because I just need to change one digit here. It's going exactly the same place, but it's for the 10.0.2 network. Okay, so that is router two done as well. And finally, we need to configure R3. So let's slide back over this side again. And R3 is going to need a route to the 10.0.0 network because it's not directly connected there. So I'll say IP route to 10.0.0.0. It's a slash 24 as usual. And the next hop address is 10.1.0.2 on R2. I also need to configure routes to the networks behind R1. So let's move across and see what they are. So that's going to be IP route going to 10.0.1.0, 255.255.255.O. Again, going to R2, which is at 10.0. Sorry, 10.1.0.2. And I'll hit the up arrow again and add my route for the 10.0.2 network. Okay, so that should be all good. Let's just check the routing tables on our routers again. So you already saw the routing table on R1. It's got routes for its directly connected networks, and it's also got routes to the two networks behind R2. R2 has got its routes as well. Let's do a show IP route here. It's got its directly connected networks and it's got static routes to the networks that are reachable behind R3 and also the two networks that are reachable behind R1. And R3, if I do a show IP route on here, it's got its directly connected networks and it's got static routes for the three networks that are all available behind R2. Okay, so that should be all good. Let's just test this now. So let's have a look and see where we need to ping to and from. So let's ping from PC3 to PC1. So I'll ping 10.0.1.10 and with a little bit of luck, we didn't mess anything up. Yep, that's all good. The ping is working. And I will also ping to PC2, which is at 10.0.1.10. 2.10 and that works just fine too. We already tested in the last lab that PC1 can ping PC2 and because PC3 can ping both 1 and 2 and pings test two-way reachability, I know that the lab is all working great now. Everything has got connectivity to everything else. 
let's just try a trace route as well. So I'll trace to 10.0.1.10 from PC3. And I can see that the first hop is its default gateway at 10.1.1.1 on R3. It then hits 10.1.0.2 on R2. Finally, it hits 10.0.0.1 on R1, and then it makes it to the final destination. Okay, so that was how we configure static routing. See you in the next lecture for more routing. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.